tell me what Jay Z album was better than Life After Death. None. Tell me a Jay Z album that was better than Goddamn When Pop Came Home. All eyes on me. Me Against the World was a classic. Two. <laughs> And could stand up against a lot of albums too when he went to jail. And when he went to jail, that's when he dropped me against the world and was killing the streets. Even when they said it was Jay, man, it's been 50 Cent, bruh. When 50 came out, I ain't hear no Jay Z music. It just stopped playing. Come on, bruh. I would there. When 50 came out, he shut everything down. Like, come on, bro. Like, I don't care what you say. To me, DMS was bigger than Shawty all day. Shawty put out two albums in one year that smoked anything he put out. Jay-Z took the first four bars of 99 Problems from you, from a song called Touched. Yes. Um, do you feel like a lot of people don't know that? I feel like, I feel like enough people know. People but I don't feel like it's that big of a deal, though. Well, it's not. I don't. I don't think it's a bite. I just think it's. To me, it's a big deal because it's tribute. Yeah. Like it's a tribute. It's not a yeah, bite. No, it's a tribute. I, I would call it mutual respect more than yes. anything. Um, we do this a lot in hip hop. Yes. Right. Where we have artists who have said things that, like, yo, fuck, that was dope. The way he said that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you want to pay homage to that wordplay. Like, how many rap songs, quality, do you listen to and been like, I would have rhymed that last bar like this. All the time. Yeah, every, every time you hear someone's rhyme, you'd be like, that's a dope rhyme, but actually I would have said that right. instead of this. And I think that's what happens. I think you feel like, you know what, this is a dope line. I don't think enough people heard this shit. I'm right. going to drop this shit in here. You know, sometimes you take a dope line and make it a hook and then people got to go back and figure it out. But no, I don't think a lot of people know that. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a big deal that they don't know mm -hmm. or a big deal if they do. I think it's dope because the fans look at it like, yo, Jay-Z, like, right. took a piece of your rhyme. Like, I didn't know that was your shit. I'm like, it's all good, bro. It's all good. So like Future said in the streets, he's bigger than Hov. Yeah, he is. He feels that. Way bigger. Like there's consistent music from him that didn't chart, that is a huge record that people like love and appreciate that. And then later... He may not have the same things to hold on to that you have at points. Traps right, understand how to get that. Ran down on them niggas with a flip back. You ain't never seen on a nigga live like that. I was still getting sex back. Had to fuck around getting them packs back. Niggas. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Boy Scotty. You know, before we start this video, all I want y'all to do is smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video. And make sure y'all hit that notification bell. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Just smash the like button. It's your boy Bullets Gotti. It's the Bullets Gotti Show. Salute. Salute. It's your boy Bullets Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Same old-ish. Just a different day. <laughs> Out here trying to get it. <laughs> Each and every day. That's all. This video right here is going to be about Jay-Z. And Big Gibbs com um how you say comments on Jay and how I feel. A lot of people was mad with Big Gip. They mad with his interview with all the dialogue. Same reason they was mad with <laughs> you know all the dialogue for the Keith Murray thing, right? And Gene Deal, right? But all the dialogue gets the truth out of people. And that's why I respect him because he gets realism from a lot of people when people don't know how to keep it real no more. So this is how I feel, right? Jay Z and shout out to Freeway. I just I'm gonna talk about Freeway. Um, I think this week I'm gonna do a video about Freeway and Young Chris because I watched Freeway's Vlad interview and I watched his um the episode with him and Young Chris on Mav Hopper. So I'm gonna talk about both of those. I'm gonna do a video talking about Young Chris and State Property. Shout out to State Property. Shout out to the whole State Property movie. Beans, Oskino. Uh, O'Melly, Petey Crack, Neef, you know, Chris Freeway, that whole movement. 
I'm gonna do a video talking about that. Um, but here's the thing about the whole Jay Z and what Big Gip was saying. Big Gip is not lying. Jay Z is overrated. Jay Z knows who to attach himself with. And I feel like Jay Z is a smart businessman because he's strategically is what you call a savvy and shrewd businessman. He's a savvy, shrewd businessman. And why I say he's a savvy, shrewd businessman is because he doesn't hold hard feelings. He's all about business. There's nothing personal with him. It's all business with him. Some things is personal, but the majority of times it's all business. And he knows how to attach himself to hot artists. He knows how to attach himself to certain waves. You know, when he was linking with the Philly dudes, he jumped on the Philly wave. When he was on the South wave, when he saw the South was getting steam, what he did, Juvenile, Silk the Shocker, Jermaine Dupri, um, Scarface, you know, UGK. Like, he just knew the certain waves that was hot. He jumped on it with that, that bounce. Or he was talking about that bounce. Like, he was getting that from the South dudes when he heard that bounce. You know what I'm saying? Every record he was doing. You know what I'm saying? And that's what kept him relevant. And then Kanye West kept him relevant. You know, like I said, the Philly dudes, Beans and all of them kept him relevant. He got a lot off that wave. When 50 Cent jumped in, first thing he did, he got next to 50. They did the whole Reebok commercial. He knew 50 was that next thing. Then he retired. You know what I'm saying? He retired, came back. But he was jacking so many different waves. Like the whole collaboration with R. Kelly. Nas was doing records with R. Kelly. He had a big collab. He was, he was doing like three three records. Nas did like three records with Kells. He went on and started doing records with Kells. Jada did Fiesta. The original Fiesta is with Jada. Jay took Jada off the record. He made it into a big mega hit. Same thing with the whole Best of Me. He jumped on Best of Me. He made it a bigger hit. So Jay-Z is a dude that whoever got a wave, he'll either crush the wave or he'll jump on the wave. That's just how he is. So when Big Gip said certain things that I said in my last couple videos that I did on Jay um, in 2021 and even recent, is that Jay was a wave rider. He didn't have a big impact like DMX, like Tupac. Like 50, if you look, DMX, Tupac, and 50 had the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest inf influential era ever in hip-hop. Because when Pac died, X came in. After X run, it was 50 Cent. 50 Cent had a major run. You know what I'm saying? So, Jay didn't have that type of run. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to look at it. When Jay was out, Pac was alive. Big was alive. Nas was doing his thing. You had the... So when everybody was over the hill, you know, Jay-Z started to have his success. When everybody was... When everybody was in their prom, the DMXs, the Nas's, the Nellies, the Pox when he was alive, the Biggies, the, 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 the um... The Maces, the Cams, the 50 Cents, Everybody that was in their prom that was winning in that era was was overshadowing him. They overshadowed Jay. Even Beans overshadowed Jay. If you really look at it, Beans overshadowed Jay. You know? Even, you know, Kanye overshadowed Jay. You know, um everybody overshadowed Jay. Cam, everybody, they overshadowed him. But the thing about Jay-Z, and I'm going to be honest, what kept him relevant, it was him having Beyonce. That's one. You got the, the what he said, got the hottest chick in the game wearing my chain. You got the, the biggest chick in the game that's a pop star 
that's your wife, the girl at the time, then became your wife. You got Kanye West, the hottest producer in the game. So when you got all of that, right, and he's giving you hits, right, now it's like, okay, I'm going to ride the wave, but now I'm the man now. Because if you look, look at that Blueprint 3 era, right? And then look at that Kingdom Come, right? Kingdom Come was lackluster. I'm being honest with you. It was a lackluster album. But it was his highest selling album. His highest selling album. And I'm not capping. Kingdom Come is Jay-Z highest selling album. Next to Blueprint 3. So his two highest selling albums was Kingdom Come and Blueprint 3. So all these albums that we keep talking about, they didn't sell the amount of units that Kingdom Come and Blueprint 3 did. I'm, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? And it was Jay-Z past his prom. You know what I'm saying? This is Jay-Z past his prom. This is not Jay-Z in the 90s. This is not Jay-Z... In the early 2000s, this is Jay-Z past his prom. This is Jay-Z coming out of retirement. This is Jay-Z basically trying to have a second run. If you look at Jay-Z music, right? Just listen to his shit, right? Nas is in his second prom right now. Nas has put out three classic albums, four classic albums with Hit Boy. Right? Classics. I don't care what nobody say. King Disease, one, two, three, and then Magic. Classics. Right? Life is good. It's better than Magna Carta. Right? King Disease is better than 4 for 4. And the Carter's album. Right? People can say whatever they want. Nas has put out better music than Jay-Z. You know, Jay, if you look at Jay's career, who he emulated. Everybody he emulated, he wanted to be just like it's look, he did me and my girlfriend. He wanted to be like Pac. He wanted to catch that Pac vibe. You know, volume two, he wanted to catch that DMX feel. That's why he had Swiss on the whole, on the album. Heavy and Irv. Volume one, he wanted that Mace. He wanted that Mace feel. That Mace and Biggie feel. That bad boy sound on, on volume one. And then Reasonable Doubt. Who he was trying to be like? Raekwon, Ghostface Killer, AZ, Nas. You have to really look. And then when you look at Dynasty and Volume 3, he was trying to be like the Philly boys, the locks. Let's keep it real. Volume 3, Dynasty, it was like he was trying to get that locks, that locks, that Philly sound, major figures, state property, and the locks. So when you really look at it, Jay emulated so many different niggas' styles and never was original that it's always, like I said, he never set the trends. It was the dudes that was hot that set the trends that he copied and he took it to the bank. You know what I'm saying? He took Young Chris' whole flow. When you listen to the Black Album, who he was trying to sound like? Listen to Dirt Off Your Shoulders. Listen to La La La. That whisper flow, that's all young Chris. But young Chris, a humble dude, he not going to say nothing, but come on, bro. And, and it's just like, it's nothing to take nothing away from Jay as a businessman, as a dude that kept himself relevant. You got to respect him. But if we going to be technical and we talking about rappers, we talking about influential rappers, we talking about, you know, errors. Jay didn't have an error. 2001 is not an error. And then if you look at 2006, that wasn't really an error. And 2009 wasn't really an error. So, all that to be said is that Jay's not an internationally known artist like a DMX, like a Tupac, like a 50, like even a Nas, like a Wu-Tang Clan. He's not internationally known like that. He's internationally known because of his wife and Kanye West. But is he internationally known on his own body of work? No. And I think that's why Jay, I think that's why Jay did the things he did. You know, and 
you know, even with the whole Rolling Stone, I think that's an insult to even, like, to put him number one when we know he didn't have an error. You can't talk about what Jay has done later in his career. We talk about in his prime. If you're going to talk about 50 rappers, what did he influence during his years in the game, in his prime? And dudes can't say nothing. What they can say? All Night Life? Blueprint? Black Album? Come on. We look at those errors and we look at the artists that was popping in those errors. Jay wasn't in the conversation. Jay was more of a of a local rapper, but he had a he he had a bag. That's what I give him. He had a bag. And that's why he was able to be on TV. He had a bag. He's a businessman. He's a hustler. So his bag put him in the right positions. But to say that he was influential, an influence, an influencer? No. No. You can't like that fifty list. That was a that's a, that they need to throw that list in the garbage. Because if you're going to deny Cameron, you're going to deny Mace, you're going to deny Ja Rule, you're going to deny DMX, all these other dudes that that was influential in that era, Tupac, Nas, you're going to deny them, and you're going to put dudes like Jay Z number one and Kendrick Lamar number two. That's like what we what we doing here? Is this a popularity criteria, or is this the criteria of people that's hip hop purists that know the culture? Because if you a hip-hop parents and you know the culture and you know those eras and those time zones and those time frames, we cannot just put a dude in that thing and say, yeah, he was that dude and he's number one because, what, because he's relevant now? Come on, man. Pop been going since 96 is still relevant. Nas been putting out classic music and still living and still putting out fire music better than Jay. So how do we... Put Jay number one, and then you're going to put Kendrick number two. Come on, bro. I get where Big Gip coming from. No offense to Kendrick. Kendrick is cool, but Kendrick is not at that level to be on no number one or number two spot. That's, come on, bro. We got to chill with that. Kendrick don't got that many albums. Nas got that many albums. Jay don't got that much of legendary moments to say he's number one over Pac. So, it's what it is, man. Salute. The way that he rolled off, like I said, when you got Biggie, Pac, Nas, The Wu, and all these people that was big in 90 and 96, you gotta understand, Nas and Pac overshadowed Jay-Z reasonable doubt. And then you add the Fuji's on top of that, Outcast on top of that, Ghostface Killer on top of that. Who's checking for reasonable doubt? And then you go into 97. Dudes was not feeling his second album. You know what I'm saying? This is the 97, I always say, was the year of Mace, Biggie, and the Bad Boy regime. No Way Out, Harlem World, Life After Death. Nobody was checking for Jay. You go into 98, 98, DMX, Big Pun, Nori, Cam, but the biggest out of that whole, that, that, that year was DMX, two, two for two. So nobody's checking for Jay-Z, even though he, he dropped Hard Not Life. Yes, he got a Grammy, but let's be, let's be honest. They gave him a Grammy because of the Andy sample. And he got the success off of that, just off of the Andy sample, and because it was hard in our life. Everybody loved Andy. Fast forward to 99. 99. 99 was a year that South was heavy. Cash money. You know, it was Southed out. But DMX was still running shit. DMX come out with the with the that X, that X album. You know, then it would X. Which, that album sold 5 million copies, went 5 times platinum, and even though Jay dropped Volume 3, I love Volume 3, but Rough Riders had the game. They had the game, straight out the gate, in 99. Fast forward, 2000, Nelly, Ludacris, Ja Rule, 
Eminem. Jay-Z is not in that conversation. Even though Dynasty was a good album, but he wasn't in the conversation. Because you got Ja, M, Nelly, Ludacris. They was popping. Now you go to 2001. That was the only year Jay had, was 2001, because of Blueprint. And that was out of the help of Kanye West. And Just Blaze and Bink, the humble monster. So with those three producers, Just Blaze, Bink, and Kanye, you get, okay, that classic. But still, who's on top, though? Ja Rule. Come on. Ja was that dude. Nelly, Luda, M. 2001 was their year. You know what I'm saying? Whether dudes like it or not, Eminem killed Jay-Z on his own album. They had a major impact. Nelly was the dude. 2002 come around. Yeah, he did Blueprint too. You know what I'm saying? And hold on. Let me not forget. Fab had a great album in 01. Jada had a great album in 01. And Nas also had a great album in, number one, in 01. But I give him Blueprint because that was the year that Jay-Z, that was Jay-Z year. I give him 2001. I always say 2001 was Jay-Z year. Fast forward, 2002. Now, 2002, Jay was not the head of 2002. He was not the face of 2002. I'm just going to be honest. He just wasn't. Like, Nelly, M, Ludacris, Ja was the biggest name. Go to 2003, 50 Cent, Mania. Everything moving was 50, M, Nelly. Them dudes was moving units. 50 came back, drawing boards, 03, like, Beg for Mercy outsold the Black Album. People keep forgetting that. Get Rich or Die Trying, 13 million. Let's keep it real. Comes back 2004, Jay is going from the game. 2005, he's going from the game. 2006, he comes back, and his first number one album is Kingdom Come. That's his first number one album. You could go look it up. It's facts. His first number one album is Kingdom Come. That's crazy, ain't it? His first number one album, the beat, his oh, his highest selling album is Kingdom Come. And not even his best album. American Gangster. He took the marketing dollars. Dudes in the Def Jam wasn't even selling that much. He was he, Def Jam was like a graveyard. Like everybody was flopping. Nobody was having like successful albums. Jay took the dollars to put it on American Gangster. American Gangster did it, but American Gangster wasn't like his highest selling album. It was a good album, but it wasn't his highest selling album. And he still wasn't that dude. You had T.I., you had Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? You had 50 still doing his thing. So Jay wasn't even in that conversation. Cam. You know, you, you had dudes that was doing their thing, and Jay wasn't in the conversation. So, and then, if you look, 2009, his biggest selling album to date is Blueprint 3. That was his second highest album. He only had two highest selling albums. Blueprint 3 and Kingdom Come. Those are his two highest selling albums. You can go look at the numbers. That's Jay Z's biggest highest selling albums. Kingdom Come and Blueprint 3. Everything else did sell that much. Didn't sell that much. But those two, 
But yes, those was his highest selling albums. And that's facts. You know, and it's not, and, and, and that's why I can understand what Big Gip is saying. It's like, dudes in New York is the ones that keep saying, oh, Jay-Z that dude, Jay-Z that dude. And other dudes be, the D, the D riders always be like, oh, Jay-Z that dude. Yo, you hating. No, dog. It's the facts. It's the facts. I'm not hating on Jay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like I tell people all the time, Reasonable Doubt was a good album. Don't get me wrong. It was a good album. It was a well-produced album. You know, um, Volume 3, great album. Volume 2 was cool. You know, um, Dynasty, good album. Blueprint, I wasn't a big Blueprint fan, but Blueprint was a well-produced album, and it wasn't bad. You know, um, Blueprint 2 was a great album. You know, Best of Both Worlds with him and Kells was a damn good album. I still play that album. You know, um, American Gangster, good album. You know, Black Album was cool, too. But if we're going to be technical, Jay was a wave rider and he's overrated because he's never had an error. Jay-Z's never had an error. And let's keep it real. When you talk about his error, 01, yes, but that was past his prime. Because 01, you've been in the game since 89 and your biggest moment was 2001. And then your successful moments of success was 2006 and 2009. So that right there shows you that Jay had his highest selling album was in 2006. His second highest album selling album was in 2009 with Blueprint 3. So when everybody else was having, you know, this video, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Make sure we get in the algorithm. Like, share, and subscribe if you like this this video. And hit the notification bell. It's your boy, Bullis Gotti. Bullis Gotti Show. Two Queen.